today we're going to make some chili con carne. Screenshot please. Buffalo is best. Chop these onions, mix the garlic, make them nice and small. Melt your butter in a uh, stock pot. When it's about this halfway, I start adding the onions and the garlic. First I do the onions, that's the first thing to go in, and then the garlic. For some reason that's the operation I prefer. Stir these onions, make sure none of them are burning. I like to salt my onions while they're frying so that they do not burn that easily. And it adds a really good flavor to your recipe. When the onions are starting to look more yellow, you can um, start getting ready to add the meat. Right now these are about halfway done, so I'm keeping a close eye on them. I want them translucent, translucent and yellow tinted, ready for the meat. I use a pound of ground beef today. I like to break it up, that's the best way to do it. I want little bitty pieces of meat. I keep it, uh, I add water to this so that it keeps the meat tender and also keeps it from burning. I like to have the meat fully cooked before I add everything. It makes the chili cook faster. Now I'm prepping my ingredients. I'm opening my cans of beans. I use three 15 ounce cans of kidney beans. But today, since I have a larger can on hand, I'm using one large can and one can of the kidney beans. I got my flour set aside. During this recipe I ended up adding another tablespoon, so go ahead and put three tablespoons down instead of two. Alright, measure out your spices. I like to keep them all on a plate so I can add them at once. Cumin adds a very good flavor to the chili. I would not make it without it. I like a healthy serving of oregano, but you can adjust this as you wish. But this is my combination I've come up with over the years. If you can't find pico de gallo in the store, um, Penzi's has a good chipotle flavoring you can use. Um, but Pico de Gallo costs like $1.99 in this store, it's worth looking for. I'm using frozen tomato paste because when I use a, a can of tomato paste I tend to freeze my ingredients as well as the chopped uh, tomato, which you'll see that later. I freeze items that are starting to go bad, and so say if my tomatoes are getting wrinkly, I'll chop them up and put them in the freezer and keep them on hand for making chili. I definitely appreciate it when I have it pre-measured and ready to go. This might be too much water, as you see. I would say about a quart and a half, about a quart of water is good to start with, and then you can adjust. Because I like to have a large amount of leftovers for my recipes, I tend to add more water and make larger amounts. It comes in handy for cooking for a lot of people as well. If you're cooking for yourself, you may have this recipe or freeze. This, this chili freezes really well. I also uh, freeze that in portions to make chili dogs for my kids on days when I don't feel like cooking. Bring it to boil, and then you're going to let it boil with the pan open. That way, the, the chili will boil away. All that water, extra water is going to boil away so that it starts to thicken up. 
you have to stir often. This is a, a recipe that you're going to want to keep close to the stove for because of the flour, it'll cake easily on the bottom of the pan. You don't want that. Just keep stirring this baby. Add that salt and uh, pepper. Taste it time to time to see how it's coming out. If you have to add flour because you added too much water or something, make sure that you sift it in and then use a whisk. I'm not using a whisk because I'm using such a tiny filter here. Use whatever you have on hand to avoid those caking, the caking phenomenon. Now it's ready to serve. You can serve it with sour cream, sour cream cheese, or even a dash of cayenne pepper. However you like your chili. It's delicious and quick. Enjoy.